Welcome back to the second video where we're continually talking about Inventor HSM, the two and a half axis free cam that runs right inside of Autodesk Inventor. Now, if you didn't have a chance to check out the first video, there should be a link right above here where you can go and check that one out first. Also, if you wanna make sure you get all the videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button here so you can assure that you're getting everything new that we're updating on the channel. But what we're doing is we're programming this throttle pedal for the BAC Mono uh, race car. In the first video, we uh, phased off the part. We did a little bit of simulation so we could see exactly what's gonna happen out of the machine. And then we actually posted out the code, what is of course the most important thing uh, for the machine. We also talked a little bit about tools, establishing relationship with your uh, tool vendor. But let's jump back on the screen here and check out uh, continually programming this part. So we got our throttle pedal here. And uh, like I said, in the first video, we created this facing uh, operation and we posted it out. Now, the next tool path that I'm going to apply here is actually to machine around the part. And here I'm going to select the 2D adaptive uh, clearing for, uh, for doing this. Now, the 2D adaptive clearing is really awesome. It's like uh, your steak knife when you when you get a steak. Um, and, and honestly, when I started out using machining, we didn't have this kind of technology available. Uh, I use it every time I got to rough out a part. This uh, roughing strategy, what is special about it is that it will let you do the full depth of the cutter. But now we actually have the... A computer calculating a constant chip load on our cutter and that is just you know uh, that's awesome gives you awesome tool path so if you're old school you definitely got to check this out if you fail new to cam well just take my word for it and just use this adaptive clearing to rough up so I'm gonna select that and again like I said in the first video we always get the menu over here is always the same so we always start out with a tool just makes it so much easier to learn. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the tool, and uh, I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna select another tool in the face mill. I'm gonna select a 16 millimeter flat end mill here. Now, if I go in and edit that, you will see here, this is what we call a standard end mill inside of machining. Uh, it comes with different uh, teeth or flutes uh, amount on it so you can get different ones again I go back to in the first video where I talked about create a relationship with uh, you know your your um, tool supplier and they can definitely help you if you're not familiar with this generally speaking if you're cutting aluminums like 6061 or, or standard steels you're normally talking between three to four flutes or teeth on a cutter and, and generally uh, we're buying carbide uh, end mills today uh, they're fairly reasonable uh, priced you can get them reground so re if you want to um, i only really go with high speed cutters when it's something off ball sizes special cutters standard carbide end mills three to four flute is, is, is definitely what you know you would normally see out in the shop and again when it comes to the feeds and speeds that's uh, where I will start out with their recommendations. So again, if something happens, they will normally be very um, happy to replace it. So I'm going to select um, this uh, 16 millimeter uh, end mill here. And uh, then I'm going to go to the next tab. Now, the next tab is called geometry. So the first tab was tools. The next tab is, ge uh, uh, tab is geometry. And I'm just going to select the bottom edge here. So we don't really normally chain anything inside of this. We don't have this picking things we can but we don't really necessarily need to uh, and just so you're aware of taking you through the tab so the second tab is geometry it's normally where we select things the next tab is the height let me just uh, move the model up a little bit here so maybe you can see so this is where we kind of like can control how we are approaching the part uh, to what depths so in this case it sets to the stock top and you will see how as soon as I hover over it I actually get a little nice preview here they will tell you what all of them are. So it really makes it easy to learn. Uh, and that's kind of nice if, 
you know, many people today don't get to sit and program, you know, eight hours straight. They wearing different hats, have to do different things. So it's nice that these things are consistent. These menus are consistent. So it's not hard if you come back. You know, sometimes, you know, you maybe don't touch your cam software for a week or two. And coming back, it should be easy to pick up. So the, the next tab here, the fourth tab, is all about our passes. That has all to do with... Uh, the cutter engaged in the material. And you will see since this adaptive is a roughing tool path, that stock to leave is automatically checked, meaning that we are leaving our cutter a little bit away from the walls and the bottom so we can go in and clean that up with another tool path. Again, just one of these small things. And then the last one is called linking. This is all what the cutter is going to do when it's away from the steel, so how it's rabbiting around. And there's a lot of great options in here, especially when it comes to with adaptive. You can control how much is staying engaged and not engaged in here. Things for you to experiment with, you know, on your own time. Um, but again, what I did with this one, I selected the tool, the 16 millimeter, and then I selected geometry around it, just selected the bottom edge. That's all I'm gonna select on this one, and I'm gonna hit OK. And you will see here that now it's just going to go in and quickly calculate uh, this tool path. And it's kind of amazing that just by selecting a tool and an edge that the tool is actually smart enough to, to figure all this out. If I go in now and uh, select a, the simulation, you will see here, let me just select this to tail so it's not all these rapid moves. You will see, see here that when I play through this, that you get a very consistent uh, tool path on this part here and it's just making sure that it keeps a most constant uh, chip load the can on the cutter what that will do is it will first of all wear less on your cutter but it's also putting less pressure on your machine while it's finishing the roughing cut very quickly now the next tool path i'm going to do here is going to be a finishing tool path so we did we did the the, the roughing now we can go in and do the finishing and I'm going to select what is called a 2D contour. So I'm going to select that. Now, you many times people will, will choose to finish uh, the part with the same one they roughed it with. That is kind of like a depending on what you're machining. In some scenarios, you cannot do that. In some scenarios, you can just you know rough and finish with the same cutter. Now, I'm going to go in here and select another tool just for that. So I'm just going to go in here and select a 10 millimeter cutter here. So it's a little bit smaller. Still an, an end mill, the same type of end mill. Um, when I go in and I select the contour here, I can again go over and select an edge uh, that I want to go around it, right? Like we did be, like we did before with the adaptive. Now you will notice that if I go over on the passes tab, that down here stock to leave is not on anymore because again this is a finishing tool path. So here we don't. We don't want that. We can control a lot of things in here. We can control the step downs um, in here. But I'm just going to go ahead and, and just hit OK so we can just see this tool path. Now, this tool path will just literally just walk around the part and just assuring that we are cleaning up that wall going all the way around. Now, you will see that it enters in here. So this is one of the things I just want to show you quick. Uh, it enters over here. It's extremely easy to change these things inside of Inventor HSM. If I wanted to change where it enters, I will go over and right click and hit edit. That will bring me right back to where we were before. Now the, the entering of our part is actually happening on not when we engage with the material, but when we're wrapping around. So that was the last tab. You might already remember this. And in here, you will see that we can exit down in the bottom. We can control where it enters the position. So if I select down here, I can literally just go over and select another point on our part here. And that will now be the new entrance. I'm just going to hit OK. And you will see that that's how easy it is to really update where you're walking in and out of the part. Now, also with this edge here, that is here, this little shelf, I could go in and select that same type of tool path. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit, hit another contour tool path. Now this time I'm going to use the same tool. So I'm not going to bother going in and change that. So I'm just going to go right over to the geometry tab and I'm just going to select right on that edge. And that's really all I have to do to do this here. So let's just hit OK. And you will see that now we're getting a nice tool path there. So very quickly we can go in and we can apply uh, these tool path 
and, and, and get the simulation on these parts uh, the way that we want you know to see it or we want to run it and then we can go in here and we can check it um, and, and see with the simulation that the tool does exactly uh, what we want now here you will see that I'm actually leaving a little bit of material uh, on here so that would definitely be something we could go back uh, and adjust very easily so I will go back into our last toolpath hit edit and then I'm, this will be the passes tab because it's this is where it's engaged in the material and uh, right in here you could do something like multiple uh, finishing passes um, you could do uh, in here you can do um, something like multiple finishing passes and then in here I could just add uh, an amount so maybe I add I don't know I'm guessing four of these and I'm gonna make some kind of a a step over so maybe a hundred thousands if we're doing in inches and you will now see that we get those multiple steps so again very easy to go ahead in here um, and uh, and make those corrections it's really about you know of course high quality that's what we all are expecting high quality but ease of use make it easy to to program your parts in here the same five tabs and making sure that you can easily go in and make those adjustments so again um, you know very easy to go in and, and program this you can simulate it like we did in the first video now we've done here and again if you're happy with it that's when we will go out and post process this so let's uh, wrap up this portion of this video we are uh, about 20 minutes in and we've already you know applied a lot of tool path and I think you can see that it's fairly easy very consistent to kind of like get through these steps and I hope that you're picking up some of these few tips here now again uh, this is done all with the free version of Inventor HSM and also before we give you I give you the link to the next video uh, don't forget that you can always subscribe we like that and uh, then you will make sure you will get the content for uh, for anything we're posting here on the channel. So let's take a quick break and come back and wrap this side up uh, of this throttle pedal.